What is the best bang for the buck gaming CPU? If you said the new Ryzen 5000, you may be wrong. Intel just lowered the price at Micro Center for the 9900K to 299. That's a pretty incredible deal. Let's talk about some pros and some cons about going with a CPU like this. Let's get started. Hey guys, Tiago here with Classical Technology. Remember to smash that like button, subscribe, hit that notification bell for more content like this. Let's get right into it. Recently, I saw that Micro Center slashed the price of some Intel CPUs, primarily of which is the 9900K. Now, we're gonna talk about a few pros for this CPU as well as a few cons. And while it may be a little bit older of a CPU, of course, we have the 10th generation 10900K. Now that the price is significantly lower, it's still a great performing CPU, especially for gaming, so you may want to consider this. So let's talk about a few pros and cons. The first pro that we're gonna talk about is gonna be the price of this CPU. Now at 299, by no means is it a budget CPU like a 3600, but we're talking about an eight core, 16 thread monster CPU that was pretty much the high end of last generation. And it very easily overclocks to over five gigahertz. This is very important, as you guys may know, with CPU bottlenecking. We're going to talk about that more in the video in terms of the performance. But having a gaming processor like this is really, really pretty awesome. And with the price at $299, this comes right on the heel of AMD announcing their new Ryzen 5000 CPUs, which, as we've spoken about on the channel, have gotten an MSRP bump of at least $50 across the entire line. That means that the cheapest CPU that's actually been announced is the 5600X, which comes in at $299. So Intel dropping the price to this 10900K to $299 is pretty much saying to AMD, we're going to try to compete with you, even if it's an older processor, at the same price for something that arguably is still going to perform better than the 5600 in terms of pure gaming prowess. Now at $299, that certainly makes this a very interesting value to performance proposition. Basically, I don't really think there's anything else on the market for 299 with this type of performance and of course i know this is an older platform but still very valid performance for the price and just as a side note the 9700k which is just an eight core cpu as opposed to having the additional hyper threading of eight threads is also on sale for 199 dollars now that's pretty incredible because actually in a lot of games the 9700k was one of the top performing cpus even sometimes beating the 9900k it clocks really really high and it's basically focused on having great IPC very low latency very high clock speeds everything that you need in order to not bottleneck your gaming GPU so now to counter that pro let's talk about a con of the 9900k now of course you're still paying $299 for a previous generation CPU even though it was the high-end CPU of the day the 10900k of course is going to be almost basically twice the price for not twice the performance it does have 10 cores 20 threads but you're going to be paying significantly more for a little boost in performance and when it comes to gaming 8 core 16 thread is definitely the sweet spot it's more than enough to play any games but of course you're going to be stuck on the z390 platform you're not going to be able to get pcie generation 4 way out in the future when that eventually becomes a thing z490 eventually will get that support with rocket lake the next upcoming intel cpus and of course amd has that already on their like x570 chips now an interesting thing to note about the age of the motherboard and future upgradability. Even the Ryzen 5000 series, which was on AM4, I believe the X570 is pretty much going to be the cutoff point where the next generation of CPUs will require a new motherboard. So even if Z390 doesn't really have a future upgrade path, the 9900K is basically going to be the fastest CPU you're going to get on Z390. The same holds true for X570. The new upcoming CPUs like the 5950X, the 5900X, they're all going to be limited to sort of that ecosystem. Whenever the new Ryzen comes out, be it Zen 4 or whatever they call it, basically you're going to have to get a new motherboard. So you're kind of stuck in the same boat if you get the fastest Ryzen coming out now or this 9900K. But still, it is an older platform, so it is a little bit of a con that it's on Z390. You're not missing out on too much, but just a couple of things. And you could look at it as almost a pro as well. Z390 motherboards are going to be considerably cheaper than the newer Z490. In fact, a lot of people upgrading to Ryzen or even Z490, you may be able to find a lot of great deals on high-end, 
more expensive motherboards for Z390 at really value prices. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. You're going to be able to find probably a higher quality motherboard for a cheaper price on Z390 just because a lot of people upgraded out of it already. Um, it's not the newest platform, so it's not going to have the biggest premium while it's still going to give you pretty close performance to even the newest generation 10th gen Intel CPUs. And of course, one of the biggest pros of a CPU like this, it still performs absolutely fantastic. Even if you take Intel's 10900K, which like I said before, at this point, it's basically twice the price performance across the board in most games and also even more professional workstation applications, maybe video editing. There's not that big of a difference between the 9900K and the 10900K. It is after all, just a couple of boost frequency differences, you know, two more cores, two more threads. So it's certainly not a huge difference. And for the price you're paying, the performance you get here certainly is exemplary. Um, in a lot of games, the last few years, the 9900K was the barn burner. It got first in like every single category. Certainly it's going to be faster than anything on Zen 2 or like the 3000 series Ryzen CPUs. And of course, the Ryzen 5000 CPUs do bring with them a lot of advancements in IPC and latency and higher clock speeds, but they're also going to come with a significant price boost. Like we said, the 5600X, which is just a six core, 12 thread processor, it goes only up to around 4.6 or 4.7, it's not going to match the performance of a 9900K. In fact, you have to get to maybe like a 5900X, which is priced at $549 in order to probably equal or beat the performance of a 9900K. And even that, it's not really going as easily over 5 gigahertz as something like this. Of course, Zen 3 does have a lot of architecture improvement for gaming, but you're going to definitely be paying the price. And remember, for the Ryzen 5000 series, you're going to need a beefier, newer motherboard like X570. X470, most should work as well. But X570, you're certainly going to be paying a little bit more as motherboard prices certainly went up for this generation of AMD motherboards. While, like we mentioned before, Z390, you can certainly find a lot more available and cheaper motherboards, especially on the secondhand market, to really make this a very good value proposition. And now, what's another possible con of getting a CPU like this, especially around the 299 price limit where we start to encroach on the more budget friendly cpus from there down to 200 this is definitely going to be the top of the the budget market if we can consider it that now remember this cpu is going to run fairly hot it's not nearly as bad as you would think but it doesn't come with a stock cooler like something that's a little bit cheaper may come from amd or intel so you're going to have to cool this with an aftermarket cooler and certainly a pretty good quality one is going to be required um, if you're going to do air cooling, I would definitely recommend maybe something like the Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 4. That's going to have the chops to really be able to keep something like this cool. Of course, then, if not that, an AIO would be perfect as well. Anything, I would go with maybe like a 240 millimeter radiator or something like that in order to cool the 9900K. And of course, open loop custom water cooling. Um, that's what a lot of these chips were actually cooled with. Because remember, a few years ago, this was a pretty high end chip. So this went pretty much in the high-end systems. In fact, even my own case labs built with the Z390 formula motherboard had this very own 9900K in it. So it's definitely an exceptional high-end CPU for pretty much a very good value price at $299. But remember, it's still going to come with some of those quirks from a high-performing high-end CPU. Namely, the cooling is going to have to be adequate. You're not going to be able to get away with a cheap stock cooler. You're definitely not going to get the same performance out of this chip as you would if you were using a higher quality air cooler or a nice AIO. A few more very positive aspects about a chip like this. Since it's been around for a while, it's certainly going to be pretty stable. There are a lot of overclocks that people have done over time that you can actually read up on. It's a, a very well-rounded, very popular CPU. Of course, the motherboard BIOS are going to have great updates by this point. It's a very stable platform. You're not going to be dealing with little quirks and memory issues. Everything that can be possible with a new launch like Intel's next generation or even Ryzen 5000 when that releases. Typically, right at inception, you will have some bugs and some BIOS issues. If you get something like this, not only are you going to be paying significantly less, but you're also going into a nice mature platform. And not to mention, if you're spending $299 on something like this or even $199 on the 9700K, 
it's definitely going to retain its value pretty well. Like I don't see it even on the used market. I don't see these going for like bargain bin prices. So I think even if you spent $2.99 on it today, probably in a few months or a few years, you could definitely sell and recoup most of that cost just because you're not paying four or $500 plus for a CPU like this. You're really getting it at its absolute lowest sweet spot new price. So that's going to help you as well in the future when you actually decide to upgrade. Um, but I think if all all you're doing is gaming a cpu like this certainly is going to last you a very long time now let's talk a little bit about cpu bottlenecking and the new rtx gpus of course amd's own big navi these are very high performing gpus so a lot of people had questions is their current cpu gonna bottleneck these gpus for many people that own ryzen 3000 the answer is going to be yes because those cpus just don't have the clock speeds the latency or the ipc to really be able to keep up with a powerful GPU like that, especially when you're doing 1080p, even 1440p show, started showing a lot of bottlenecks. Now, something like the 9900K is going to be much better tuned for a GPU like that, just because it has absolutely all of the elements that you want in a gaming CPU. So you're going to get much higher performance out of a 9900K than basically almost any other CPU on the market, aside from like a 10900K or something from the new 10th generation series. And of course, like we mentioned before, Zen 3 also has some great performing CPUs, but first, these aren't released yet. They may be in limited quantities when they're finally released in November. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have any questions down below. Remember to subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next video.